hello. Everybody, you're not going to see our beautiful faces today. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of different uh, in-depth approach uh, this time around. Uh, we're going to deep dive into basically this. This is going to be the Tim Duncan of our podcast, Mr. Fundamentals. <laughs> Big Fundamentals. Uh, so I'm here with Chris, of, uh, like usual. So we're just going to deep dive into to basically like we're trying to essentially teach you guys some stuff where it's like and gals, I'm sorry, guys and gals, some stuff where um, maybe the game doesn't teach you. Because the game does a really good job of having anti-errors and uh, combo practice. And, like, the training mode in Street Fighter is actually really good. Um, but we're here to kind of teach you those things that, like, yo, you're just picking up the game. You know, stuff that you may not find on YouTube, um, you know, kind of thing. So we're going to, I'm going to play Ryu, we're in training mode, Chris is going to join me, um, and we're just basically going to go from there. I'm going to play Ryu, I've never played Ryu in this game, so, you know, take my advice very, very loosely. Um, I'm definitely not giving you any in-depth Ryu knowledge, but this is maybe what we would do if we're like, oh, hey, we're just picking up the game, we're going to learn, you know, a character, this is how we would approach it, kind of thing. Cool. So yeah, so I'm gonna pick someone too, here. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna pick someone that's pretty simple. You know what? I'm gonna pick Guile. Yeah, I was gonna say I think Guile is a great choice. Um, because I had one of the guys ask me, hey, if I was playing somebody else and I'm just trying to like learn the game, I actually said Ryu or Guile, because to me they're fundamentally very similar. Um, except one is you know, a motions character and another is a charge character. Yeah. A yeah, like they're big fundamental characters here, so I think this is a good option to go with. Uh you go here. And also I have not touched Guile in this game at all. So that that'll also again same thing, show you kinda like how I look at uh things here. So Yeah. Uh we were talking briefly and I stopped it so we hear. So someone I was like, Who should you pick? Um and Characters like this are good because they're pretty simple. Um, Ryu might be a little bit more complicated in this version of the game, but overall it's still Fireball, Dragon Punch, Tatsu. Guile, it's the same he ever was. He's Sonic Boom. Uh, he's, you know, that, so it is, it's the same as he always is. Um, however, you were basically saying someone wants to play Manon and you wouldn't necessarily suggest that. And I agree, I wouldn't suggest it necessarily. Like, I'm not going to say Manon should be who you pick for this, but I would tell anyone pick who you want to play if you want to play someone who's not necessarily like if you want to play kimberly who isn't a traditional necessarily street fighter her archetype's in there guy's been there but she isn't like you know she's in the show though she isn't someone you could pick a character who plays like her and another character plays like her like i've no but if that's who you enjoy that's who you should play because that's who's going to make you get in here and practice i started yeah. with yun and third strike would i recommend yun to any person picking up street fighter no he's a very complicated character but it also made it so that i was always in training mode always trying to learn something so yeah. you know go with you know if you don't have a character that you really enjoy and you just want to pick up someone then yeah you know ryu i think ryu's honestly i want to learn a bit of ryu i've been saying that for a minute i just haven't put any time into it but then yeah but if you don't if you're like yeah i really love you know i really love Aki, i really love cammy you're gonna you're gonna be in a rougher learning thing except but if you can accept that going in yep. go with it and i apologize yeah. to anyone watching you know well i don't apologize you're welcome for my mods <laughs> you're welcome for my oh, kakashi like, just, just to, to add to what chris was saying was like I completely agree. So I, I tell anybody that's new to the game the same two things. One, play on whatever you want to play on. If you want to play on a controller or a hitbox, arcade, whatever, just play the game. Play on whatever makes you comfortable. Yes, I OGs will make fun like of you, will say, but yes, right. play on it. <laughs> to play on an arcade stick, but I mean, play on whatever you're comfortable on. And then the second thing is I always tell people the same thing. Play whatever character you want to play. Because I am a person that strongly believes you are going to play and benefit a lot more playing somebody that you're interested in versus trying to play the meta or trying to learn the game or things of that nature. So play the character that like you would play 
that you are interested in. Yeah, because that's me. Like, if you just there are some people that can just pick top tier or whatever. And shout out to those people. I but if me personally, if I don't like personal, if I don't enjoy a character, I can't play that character. So like, if you're someone who can just grind through it. You, you might be better off, honestly, if you can just be like, you know, I'm just picking up Luke, and I and I don't care about this. I'm just picking top tier. You might be better off, honestly. <laughs> but yeah. for me personally, that's never worked out for me. I, I That just means I end up visually finding a character, or I drop the game if I can't find that character. Yeah, agreed. So uh, let, let's dive into some stuff. So um, is your, your, you got your frame meter on, right? Uh, let me see. Oh, I think you have control because you're this is your room. Uh, well i have it on for me so you but should be able to i can't see anything can i oh here we go okay i can okay it's a different button in training mode okay here we go yeah we're, we're trying our best to do this because we're doing the yeah. online training this neither of us have done this yeah so it's my first time doing with this us. here so sorry y'all all right frame meter input for both are my shortcuts the same no so we definitely always like there's a good conversation to have. Like when you come in, first thing the training mode is I always turn on inputs, like for yes. sure. First, and yes. inputs are super important because the reason inputs are important is because you can actually see where you're messing up. So if you're say you're trying to learn a charge or you're trying to do a notation and it's not coming out, like you having the inputs on the left or right hand side of the screen can tell you, oh, I'm missing that down forward part of my quarter circle forward so you think you may be hitting down for it but you're not because you're registering it too fast or you're not getting down into that down forward position before you hit forward so it's super important and i know it sounds really dumb but like make sure it's on because when you go to practice that notation and that fireball or special move isn't coming out stop look at your notation and see did you know am i perfectly executing that down to down four to forward then punch you know kind of thing and street fighter 6 has a little bit longer window uh when it comes to stuff like that so you don't have to be on the exact same frame that you press forward and punch to get a fireball to come out or anything like that like it's pretty it's pretty lenient so yes um <laughs> So you'll see him talking. I'm just trying to make sure my buttons are right because um, the, there's some things. So there's some things that are not available uh, in this version of the training mode that are in regular training mode. So I was seeing what was in there. Um, so anyone trying to learn, the, fir the first thing I would definitely recommend. Um, you can't see it in here, but in your basic settings, and maybe I'll do, I'll probably, you know, I'll, maybe that'll be a little short video we make for the YouTube, but it's just turn, uh, how, turn on um, save states. Save states are really, really good. It helps a lot in training mode to be able to just set up something, hit a save state, and not have to do that same thing every single time. I use it a lot with Kimberly. Uh, where I'm just trying different enders, different options, things like that, but I don't want to have to set up a whole new combo. Yep. It would also be good for people out there if you're learning a combo and you drop it at the same point every time. Well, you can be like, start the combo, quickly hit the button to save the state there, you know, around the time where you start, where you drop it, and then you can just, oh, I dropped it, hit the button, I'm back where I was. Um, depending on the combo, I that could be annoying, but yeah, that's something you should definitely do. Because I actually do not use save states. Um, and that's just purely, I've never used them. Okay. So yeah. I do think that's a great video that we yes. can, I, and I learned that introduce after this. Okay. Is yeah. That'll be a, that'll be a little short. I'll make, because I learned that actually watching JB when I was learning Jamie, um, his super, his level three, you just follow up after it. And you don't want to have to sit through that long level three right. every single time. Just <laughs> right. to try it. And I was doing that for a minute until I happened to watch a stream. And he was like, okay, I set this up. And I was like, oh, snap. So, yeah, I'll definitely yeah, make that a little short later. But uh, let's talk Street Fighter. So, I mean, the first thing I'm going to tell anybody is combos. Combos are the easiest thing to learn because you don't need anybody else. It's you in training mode. So, like, I don't know any guile combos for real. But I, I know he can do something like... So there you go. Hey, so here you go. Like, and then of course you're not just making this up. Go watch. So you picked your character, right? Time to go watch matches. So there's gonna be a lot of things you can look up. YouTube, of course, I usually recommend people look uh, first because you, if someone's good with that character and they're 
you know, here you're going to be a lot of videos. So if I'm like, if I want to look up Guile, I would just go Guile, Guile Street Fighter 6 YouTube on YouTube, Street Fighter yeah. 6 tournament, something like that. And I, I, me being me, I already know who I'm going to see. I'm going to see Knuckle Duo. I'm going to see Kaba. I'm going to see, uh, I don't even know if Ice is really playing Street Fighter 6 anymore, but I'm going to see, I'm going to see people, but you're going to see people, when you start seeing them pop up over and over again, you know they're probably decent. Now, you're definitely going to get your YouTube content creators, uh, people. And not to say that they're at the low level, but they're uh, here. And you probably learn, like, some basic stuff from them, too, and kind of work your way up. But they're not going to be the top-level guys. Um, but you can get a, a idea, especially if you see someone's at Master or High Diamond or whatever. You're going to get an idea of at least how to play your character by yeah. watching them. So... Shout out to Third Strike. Uh, Twelve, the character in there had a had a super called X Copy, where you turn into you, and that's what we call it. We would tell you a lot of people. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is find a, a top player of your character and start the X Copy, meaning you want to copy what they're doing in certain ranges, and that's how you start. Yeah. So I would even step back a little bit and so the first thing i always tell people when they first start playing the game is the character that you pick figure out what their buttons are so like you know jabs tend to be the fastest moves in the game so you have you know light punch medium punch heavy punch which can also be jab strong fierce um and then you have you know same thing for kicks light medium heavy which is short for a roundhouse i will never use those and the reason is because Forward is an awful name for a button, in my opinion, because if I tell you to do forward, forward, am I telling you to press forward and do kick, or am I telling you to dash? Like, so, but the reason I say this is because you could be watching those videos, and I do agree with Chris, it is an awesome idea to go and watch players, but before you get to that point, this is like ground level, because a lot of times people, you and I can go watch players and go, oh, that's good, I can pick up on that, I'm going to do that kind of thing, or watch a combo tutorial and do that. But a lot of times people struggle with understanding what it means to, like, play the game. So, like, if I'm playing Ryu and I start playing this dude, I'm going to do, okay, that's four frames, that's four frames as well. So fastest moves in the game are four frames. Probably going to be jabs. Yeah. His short hits low, but it's five frames, so it's not going to be as fast as his crouch jab but it makes the opponent block low. So then, then I'm going to go into medium punch. So like medium punch, six frame startup, kind of nubby, but I bet you it's probably plus on block. Block for me. Minus one. So minus one isn't awful, um, yeah, but it's very good, yeah. short. Um, and what we mean by minus one is like, so if he blocks this, him being minus one technically would be his turn, but you have to take into consideration a couple of things. So A, you have to expect him to press a button after you and him to have the reactions that that one frame is really going to matter and you know awful you also want to find like most characters will have a positive button in the game and what that means is when they block uh, it puts you into a block stun that's long enough that uh, you can do something after it so that's his positive move which I feel awful for Ryu players if that's your only positive move I'm hoping there's more yeah, I think they got the, well. They got the charge stuff, so they probably get a little bit more of that. I think Ford Fierce too. I think Ford Fierce is plus. Two. Yeah. Yes. Goes, okay. Yeah. So there we go. So that one's plus one. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse Ooh, me. And you get a link after it. Oh, I think I knew that, but like I've never really paid attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. So now we're looking at so medium. This is heavy punch. So this has really good range, and it moves him forward too. So you could definitely whiff punish with that. The yeah. so whiff punish means basically like Chris puts out a button, and I'm punishing him for pushing out the button, or we're trading. But there yeah, you go. There you go. Right there, that counter. So if I were to like, let's say I stuck that out, and he can yeah, right, right there, and that's gonna be big. That's reuse. So that's big damage. So yeah, yeah definitely learn your buttons. I'd also I'd also say go into go into training mode or go in and do at least a, like the beginner trial combo so you at least see what things look like yeah um and then you know and if you can get to the point where you can do the advanced combos cool and honestly that that should that's a that's a first step for you trying to learn how to play the game because i personally cannot learn how to play just by watching and be like okay i got these combos now i'm ready to go i have to yeah. like and that's why i say like training matches are where you find the questions training modes where you find the answers so you can't like unless you 
the, 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 the beginning questions are going to be pretty simple. What do my buttons look like? What do I do when they jump? What, what do I do when no one's doing anything? How do I get in, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Those are a lot of questions you can answer just by watching someone who's good with your character. And then from there, break it down to your level. So, for yeah. example, execution hasn't been a huge issue for me in a while but there's definitely still games where execution's a problem for me. And then you got to be like, okay, well, if I can't do oh this combo, what can I do something that does yeah. something similar? Like, and I personally, like, you all, you always have to take your personal thing. Me personally, I have a rule where, depending on the game, if a combo does a certain amount of damage, it's got to do... Well, so I'll say Dragon Ball because that's one I know. For me in Dragon Ball, in order for me to learn a harder combo, it has to do at least 300 more damage. If it's not at least 300 more damage, it's not worth me possibly dropping a combo. Yeah, and agreed. You find, so find your own rule for that. With Street Fighter VI, I haven't had to have that rule because there's uh, the execution is not as... Uh, for me personally not as hard in other games to where i've had to be like oh i can't do that combo at all or something like that yeah. so it hasn't been an issue for me in this game but in other games that is a hard rule i had like in i think in blaze blue i think it was like 100 damage or 50 damage or something like yeah. that or, yeah, yeah. i had somebody come to me and they were like oh i'm interested in playing luke but i don't know if i can get his perfect knuckle timing down and i'm like bro first of all i didn't even know he had a perfect knuckle and i fight luke's all the time and so I jumped into training mode just to check real quick, and it was like, Perfect Knuckle gave you 100 more damage or something like that. I don't know full combo follow-ups. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But it's like, bro, don't rack your brain over 100 damage. Like, like yeah. It's not a, a reason not to play Luke. <laughs> that's a reason for you to keep training mode in that. Keep tra keep doing it in training mode until you can get it consistently and bust it out in like the hub or whatever. But if it's tournament or ranked, do your lighter combo. until If Luke's who you genuinely enjoy, do the other easy combo until yeah. then. And then as you get better, like, um, I'm trying to think, um, actually let's, we can talk about Mina, Mina RD, who just won uh, Red Bull Kumite. If you go watch his earlier Luke videos, he was dropping perfects all the time. And, but he, you know, he's still playing Luke because the thing, Luke's damage is a big buff, you know, it's a big pro, but it's not the reason you pick Luke. So, yeah. like, it's not the only, it's definitely a reason. It's up there, significant reason, but it's not the only reason. So, uh, there are plenty, like, I see Ending Walker, another top player. If you're new to the game, you may not know him. Ending Walker is a young kid. I think he's 17 now from the UK. Um, his DJ, I don't think I've ever seen him land a full level 2 with DJ. He's a top player. He is one of the best players yeah. in, the, in the world, qualified for Capcom Cup undefeated in his region, <laughs> in his in his region for qualifying for Capcom Cup. And I've seen, I don't think I've ever seen him. I'm sure he has, but I'm saying when I've seen him play, when he pops up on people's streams, he drops DJ's level two all the time. And he is a top player. So like, again, that's something where if there's something that's holding you back, find if you can try to find ways around it until until just practice it in the background yeah. until you ready you know and slowly um so another thing i do is i like to run drills so if i'm trying to learn a combo i'm gonna do it a bunch of times in a row and i'm gonna do something to where i'm like oh i i'm i can't do this combo i gotta i gotta you know go to bed okay go to bed i gotta land this combo three times in a row yeah yeah you can even go old school with it too like a great example is like you're just starting the game and you're like i can't fireball so what you want to do is you want to practice fireballs and you want to get to a point in time where like you can fireball 10 times in a row without messing it up and if you mess up you start over exactly um and that's both sides people always go like yo i'm i'm super dope on the player one side but i haven't practiced player two and i'm like cool so what happens if you're on player two Yep. And um, so 10 both ways. And it's, it's yes. like, it sounds simple, but it's really big and it, it will help you with your execution as far as like special moves go. Yes. And this, still, this is something that still happens even. So for example, I didn't know this was such a big deal in Tekken. Like they're, they literally, you choose your side and there are people who like just don't practice the other side at like a decent level. And you literally, if I know you're someone because and the thing is, if we look at you and you, we we try to take most of the saying, hey, you don't dragon punch on this side, or maybe and next you know you do dragon punch. I'm like, hmm, I notice you only dragon punch when you're on the side. You know what I'm gonna do, right? I'm throwing you to that side, yeah. and now 
and, and now you gotta and now oh, oh you don't know how to dragon punch now you oh now, now you're yeah, taking everything all this. <laughs> because you don't know how to dragon punch from that side and you may oh i got crouch fierce but it, it's not a great anti-air button because you have a dp so they make it so it will trade like it could definitely like, let me see if i can get it i don't know his jump ins <laughs> now i'm making i'm looking stupid now <laughs> i don't know his buttons but is it this one? no he may not have one he may not have one of those like kind of horizontal like jumping buttons but depending on the so this is not a good example but i will say specifically with kimberly her jump fear is she's horizontal and she trades with anti-airs like this right here yeah because of that um and but there are a lot of characters that have those buttons. Like... so if you had a gp on that side guess what it wouldn't matter so yeah both sides but <laughs> that brings up a good point too like if you're a beginner and you can't dp like yes you need to learn it like there's no way around it but like there are steps to this so like yo i'm not comfortable dragon punching so instead you're you're using other anti airs you know and you can do that for a while that's okay like you it, it's literally like the walk before run type thing like yo i can't dp that doesn't mean you should stop anti airing like yes. i'd rather see you go out and attempt to anti air with a button than being like yo i just can't anti air so i'm just going to take this block like there's tears to this. I would much rather see you try and it get traded with or something along those lines than just take jump ins. Because if you're just taking jump ins, like it's gonna be a long night, kind of thing. I um, just want to briefly so, say I'm a little upset at how easy these perfects are because I've never touched God in this game and it's like perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing. So please, if you're listening. Please stop randomly sweeping. Like, <laughs> sweep is so negative that, like, Chris blocks this, and I'm 12. minus 12. Bro, so, he, he could push see. whatever button he wants, yeah, the, realistically. Yeah, I could, could... Like, yeah, like, I couldn't do that, but let me see. This is 13. But I could definitely just... I don't know. Mm, mm. <laughs> like, yeah, I could yeah, definitely... It's just not worth something. it. The, the risk versus reward... The risk is so high and the reward is so low that, like, it's not worth doing. Please stop randomly sweeping. It, I know it's tempting. jump in, guys. If, well, I mean, actually, you can test a jump in, especially if you're a low level. Test the jump in. But the same thing. You cannot rely on that. If you're panicking and you're like, I just want to do something, I just want to press a button, that's going to be one of the things you got to get over is getting building some patience in your game because you... Like, especially depending on who you play, sometimes you just gonna be, that's how it is. So, like, I'm playing Guile. Guile's not really, like, he can rush down, but he's not a rush down character. No. So, you're gonna have to deal, learn how to deal with a little bit of pressure. And also how to charge. Another up. fun thing, if you don't know, if you've never played Street Fighter, you cannot have more than one fireball on the screen at a time. So, if you're fireballing and you're like, I'm recovered, why can't I throw another one? That's why. So, yeah. So, let me think of what else. So, yes. Combos, I would say, like, learn execute anything execution is something that you can always learn by yourself. So, that's something that's yeah. always going to be at the top. You're always going to be learning execution. It's never going to go away. But that's something that you can always practice by yourself. You don't yeah. need anybody here. You can always set up different things. That's the best thing about fighting games is you can do all this by yourself. Like, yeah. even if you, like, yo, I'm at, I'm in the country. I have my laptop with me. I want to play Street Fighter. I don't have internet. You can play against the computer, and it's great because it's, like, moving target practice kind of thing. Because the computer is not going to, clearly not going to do things that a human's going to do. But, like, yo, I can punish this. I can work on, you know, counter hits, things of that nature with, you know, with punishes, um, counter, not counter hits. Um, oh, my God, I'm drawing a blank. Um, hit confirms. So... Basically, you're putting out a button, and you're, if it hits, you do the combo. If you put out a button and they block, you don't do the combo. Things like that. You can always, There's always stuff to do when you're by yourself. That's like, It's like a gift and a curse when it comes to fighting games. Because when you're by yourself, it's like, yo, there's nobody to blame but yourself. So if you're not producing, and that's like the hardest thing with fighting games and why people quit. It's like, if you're losing, it's on you. It's 100% you. There is no AI. This is coming from, like, I played Madden competitively, and I was 
you know, pretty decent at Madden. I stopped playing the game because, it would, like, you'd play in some downs, like, an interception would happen, and the computer would drop it, and then the same play would happen, and they'd catch it. And Or, why this guy blocked this time, but last time he didn't. I just couldn't do it anymore. It was so AI-dependent that I switched over into fighting games. It was something I've always been interested in, and then I met Chris in college, and, you know, basically he got me into it, and it was just like... Once you do learn that and you get to that level, man, it feels great. Like, because they're like, I remember growing up with a buddy, and when we were growing up, you know, he was the dude that could always do stuff on pad that none of us could do. And then I started playing, learning the game, playing on a stick, and played him, and I wiped the floor with him. And people were like, he, like, thought I was cheating or something. And I was like, no, man, I'm just learning to actually properly play the game. So I think the next thing that we should cover, I do feel combos is important. What we just went over is very important. I think we actually really should go over system mechanics within the game. All right. Cool. Um, Definitely. So drive rush and we can show like different tiers of drive rush. Like uh, it's something that I'm awful at that Chris is really good at is being able to drive rush and not seeing the parry animation. But that's something that we'll get to like later on. So let's go over the drive system as a whole. Okay. Um, so, so we'll start with Drive Rush, rush and I'll let Chris take the mantle on this one. Okay, cool. So with Drive Rush, uh, well, let's start actually with Parry, because that's kind of what, technically what opens it up. So you have Parry. Uh, you're just holding medium punch and medium kick here. So in this case, I'm just holding it. Um, so if you look at my Drive Bar, it slowly is going away, but as I parry, it comes covers back. So this is something really important uh, here. It does a few different things. Now, I'm holding it here, but uh, let's see if I can get a perfect parry. Keep trying to fire it. fireball here. I'm doing it too quick. Oh, I'm doing it too far. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's one of the that. things too that like there you played there it was. <laughs> If and, you do that in match, I swear I get perfect parried all the time. And now you're trying to like do it, and you're like, I can't get this damn thing to land. Yeah. So perfect parry is good for a few things. So regular parry, uh, there is nothing you can do after it. You have to wait for the recovery of it. Perfect parry allows you to do something immediately afterwards. Really good against characters like Ryu, projectile characters, because you can drive rush after it, which is that. We'll get into that in a second. And you can jump. You can mix it, move immediately after perfect parry. Um, so definitely something you should work on. Some people like to use a macro button to, to make it easier so they they make sure they're hitting the buttons at the same frame. Because you can see mine, you see how I have a little, like a light kick that comes out like a frame after. Sometimes you'll get like something like where you get like something, I can't manually do it, but something yeah. where you basically press a button slightly before the other one and you ended up getting counter hit for it. So that's something that you I have to... I won't lie, I thought about getting a nice little macro button right above my top row yeah. for for parry yeah I, I i personally don't do it not because i think it's like wrong or whatever because if it's in it's in the game but because i am not like i would have to retrain my brain to hit a button that i n i've never hit in my entire life yeah. so for me it yeah, hasn't been I a have big enough DI. issue yeah it hasn't been a big enough issue for it so like if i had come into the game using it i'd probably be fine like in yeah. strive i use a dash macro button um here but in this one, I just I just take it. It has not been a big enough problem that many times to real to make it worth. It. It's just more just kind of pay attention and make sure I'm hitting that. But uh, that's yeah. parry. It works. So let's rewind. Everything. So let's break down parry a little bit more. So parry is really good because go ahead and parry. It blo it does highs, but it also does lows. So Chris is not having to guess whether this is a high, low, an overhead, any of this stuff. Uh, so this I is really good. And this is a lot of the complaints that you'll see within the game is people wish there was like maybe, oh, if you're parrying down, you have to hold, you know, a low, you have to hold down or something like that. Um, so explain, are there any different properties when you're parrying versus just normal blocking? Yes. So first thing is going to be all frame data is the same for versus a regular parry and blocking. So if the button is normally plus, you're still plus even if they parried. Um, so to keep that in mind, parry does not, it's not like third strike where oh, I got parried, I'm immediately negative, no. Perfect parries, yes, but regular parries, no. Um, it also leaves you closer. So like, uh, let's say if I, uh, par like just block. So notice how I got like three there, but if you parry, 
Oh, so I got pushed out a little bit. I got it pushed out more. So yeah, so that third hit won't hit. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. Parry does change the spacing. So there are some things that, uh, depending on the move, like the like you experiment with your parry. So one thing I always mention is Geef. Um, he does his forward roundhouse where he does a spin kick. On regular, if they space it right, on regular blocks sometimes it's, you can't do anything. But on parry, because of the recovery, it can you can actually punish it. So there are things where you can par punish if you just parry them versus just straight up blocking, even if they're moves that you know normally they push out too far. So that's something to keep in mind. Parry, parry of course will also uh, loses to to grabs. Regular parries you cannot do anything. So that's a punish counter. It does here. So regular throw does what, like 15, 12. So regular throw is, is 12. But if he were to parry, and I throw him, go ahead and parry for me real quick. Damn, two two K right there, 2,440 yeah. right there. So big damage increase. So you saw how much life that took on there. So you did here also out parry. This game is a thousand, right, or 10,000? Uh, standard is 10. There are some okay. couple characters. So if you see here, and also so try hitting me. Or just, yeah. Notice I'm pressing buttons. Notice how they are not coming out. Like, you cannot pre do anything out of parry except for drive rush. Like, I'm pressing everything and nothing's coming out. So, parry is much as good as parry is. It's not like, oh, you just hold parry and you win. Because, oh, like, I could even, you could even do, like, drive rush, recognize your, like, oh, I jabbed, I recognize your parry, now I'm going to drive rush and throw you and get this extra damage. Uh, so, you can, yeah. And, like, I could, like, you can't do anything about that because I'm still in parry. I, mean, I would have to perfect parry in order to get that. So, parry, as good as it is, it is not just the end-all, be-all. There are ways around it. Um, there are ways to bait it, that kind of thing. But it, it does, the, it's the start of the drive system. So you start with that, parries, perfect parries um, here. And then we go into drive rush. So drive rush. So oh, pause, just because we were talking about, see, he's losing his drive bar. So explain burnout to people. Ah, so burnout is, as you see, the green bars up top. This is a very important resource. You have it fooled from the beginning of the round. This is one of the reasons Street Fighter VI moves so quickly is that you are starting with a full resource here, and it does a lot. Um, it allows you to do a lot of things here. You can cancel a move with a drive rush. We'll get into that in just a sec. Uh, you can parry, but again, as you see here, just tapping parry takes half. If I parry something, I'll get that back, but if I don't, I lost half. And again, yeah. you, you can't just hear. And as I hold it, I have the um here. Let's let's turn off the. I was like, can we turn that off? Can we turn off? No, nope, we can't. We can't I can't. Off the... oh, okay, you can. All right. Yep. Yeah. See so if we can turn off the infinite meter there. It's gonna reload us back in. <laughs> there we go. So you can see here, I burnt out. And burnout. Now, so normally that is a negative one button. Now it's plus three. So adds four frames, plus four frames and blocks done. Now, you, as you this block, this is really you, scary because yes. now everything, every move in the game is like positive. Yeah, and that's the, like it's you gotta yeah. take, you gotta add on your frame. Plus, you do not have access to any of your EX moves that that would normally have invincibility like that. You don't get any of that. The only thing I have would be would be his super, which I don't know. What's the super motion? Is it is it fireballs or is it? <laughs> that's a good question. I okay, so that's definitely level don't three. play Guile. Yeah, this is level three. So there we go. Yeah, does that okay? Those are the, if I don't have super meter and I'm in burnout. Depending on your character, you are S O L. For the most part, yep. it's actually every character. I think some characters like uh, there are characters that like not Manon, um, like uh, J P or Marissa that have some armored moves that they still have access to. But for the most part, you don't want to do that. So that is an important resource to keep an eye on. But it's also you can't just baby it. You got to use it because it leads to a lot of things. So just you'll and you'll see. Again, as you study matches, how people use it, how people things. One thing that you can always do is that you uh, 
the level three supers do pause the, the the drive meter and allow you to gain it back so if you're in burnout it allows you to you know get that back typically it brings back a half uh a half of a burnout gauge if you're not in burnout you usually gain back one and a half to two dry bars depending on your character i think it's always one and a half but i want to okay, be a little here so i'm gonna make it so we have no drive bar at all so oh maybe it won't let me burn out Bruh. <laughs> uh, try to try par parry. And I'll try to see if I can... Nope, okay, nope, it's just going to automatically do it. So Which no worries. is crazy because I have it set to fixed. Oh, it's that's probably it's why. Fixing yeah, zero. it's fixing to zero. No worries, okay. that's probably you know, it's probably something that we can discuss later on. That might be a little bit in-depth anyway. Uh, so, but let's, uh, so yeah, burnout's important, and if you see yourself, like, try to avoid it. That's all I can say yeah. here. Yeah, if you, you don't want to be in burnout. Yeah, if you find yourself to where you see that burnout getting orange, and you got a level three or something like that, then, then use that. Um, is it, what is it? But that being said, if you're, if you're gonna, like, burn yourself out to win a round, you absolutely do it. Yes. In fact, I would... it refills at the beginning of the round. Yes. So, like, absolutely, if you have it and you can confirm kill, you are spending every resource you got. In fact, I would suggest if you can't, like, burn out every round to win a round. So, specifically, I mean, if you have, let's say, unless it's going to, unless it's the end of the match, but let's say you got a super, and depending on, like, it, this is going to depend on the character, but for the most part, it's good every time. Um, and even with Kimberly, it's still going to be, you know, your preference. But if I'm going to kill you, but and I can do an easier combo, but I have the resources to burn, burn out every time because it's going to build you more meter. And you're going to have that meter for your next round. So even if I could do ba ba ba, maybe I do. And that's how I kill or something like that because, yep. you know, I. Versus just doing jab, 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 flash kick. Yeah. Because you didn't want to spend the bar or... And that's something that, like, I am definitely weak at that I'm trying to improve upon, where it's like, I have an enemy dead to rights, I have a full stick of butter as far as my drive bar goes, and I do my normal, like, jab, hit, confirm combo. Instead of extending it to yes. confirm that kill Just, or... Like, try to kill with those, or even if you're like, hey, I know I could kill with an easier combo, and this, again, once you get better with this, you hear... But just because it's going to build you more super meter if because of that, whereas opposed to just three hits, now you're getting six hits, and now, you know, that's more meter for you. So that's something to keep in mind uh, as well. But uh, yeah, burnout also oh, also allows this. There's only the only time you can get stunned in this game, and the only time you take chip damage in this game is when you're burned out. Uh, yeah. So if you're burnt out, you have to be very careful about uh, if you're in your corner about dr drive impact because in this case you'll get a special animation where you're slumped over with the stars and you get a full whatever they want to do combo and that's something that you have to keep in mind as well as the fact that you take chip damage so normally when you block there's no chip damage you just take drive damage and as you can see there but which when is you're super burnout, important because if i'm low on drive Yes, and you're low. I block on. that, then I get burnt out, and then shenanigans start. Yes, so that's something to keep in mind. And again, you're going to see that in times. You'll see sometimes in matches where people intentionally get hit because they don't want to take a block damage on, wake up, and get end up getting hurt. So that's something that you'll definitely see um, here. But let's go into. We've been using a bunch. Let's go into the next step, which is drive rush. Yeah. So out of parry, forward, forward, and you get that. You'll see that green here. And that, that also does the same thing as Burnout does, where it adds extra frame to here. So that's normally, what is that on hit normally? It's plus four normally. And now it's plus eight. So you see that. So th this is really good. It's really strong. It's I don't personally think it's too strong, but you're going to see it a lot and because you're, it's very quick. And here, so first thing you're going to like here is just getting used to using it here. Um, now you don't want to do like this you don't want to hold parry in and do it because you are at the parry animation startup comes out first 
and then that makes it slower. So let's try yeah. if I, here. You want to do that if you if you see that what I did there, the, uh, I kind of mashed it, and that's finally and that's honestly okay. I do not say you have to have perfect execution. Your stuff is not going to look perfect for the most part. If you are like yeah. that, awesome. But for the most part, you're not going to look perfect. But if it comes out when you want it, that's all that matters. If you see here on my screen, you'll see those three purple bars. Those are frames. If you do this right, which is forward, then forward plus parry, you should see three bar, three bars there. That means that your uh, it came out in three frames. That is the fastest possible drive rush. Yeah. So you'll see that. Oh, so that you... versus that first one he did was nine frames. Yeah. So that it doesn't sound like a lot because we're I mean we're playing the game it's in 60 yeah. frames per second, but like uh, six additional frames gives you a chance to react versus it being instant. I mean I'm reacting now because I'm looking yeah. for it, but like. If it's instant, it's hard, much harder to react to. And if yeah. he's putting out a button too, like that's where like characters like Jury are really good at because her drive rush is so fast that she can do it and put out a button at the same time that it's a lot harder to react to. Yeah. But if I'm making it a 10 frame startup versus three, you know that's a big difference. Yeah, I mean, that's a whole button. And of course, you know, with things here, like for example, I, you know, I don't always do this, but this is definitely for neutral. You want to have that. Like if I get a combo, I could, you know, I could hold it and mash because it's going to come out because I'm holding the button. I'm doing it before he recovers. Yeah. So in that case, you see me here, I'm doing this and it still came out in three frames because I was holding it. And you'll see that if you go look at any of my, my replays here, you're definitely going to see that after a combo where I'm doing drive rush I'm I'm hold, I'm holding in the mashing and yeah. same thing with theme theme with combos with drive rush combos I'm holding the mashing I don't know anything for him where he can juggle but if he had like like something yeah, like that's that something that the game doesn't teach you because <laughs> so the reason this works is because your character has not fully recovered from like the jump button or you know whatever is happening so the reason you can mash it out is because the recovery frames are not over. So you can do that mash out and you don't have to worry about it being messed up. Because instead, the game is going to give it to you at the first possible frame that it will allow you it to happen. Yeah, so there are times where mashing is totally okay. And that is one of them. And honestly, to this day, I do not time. Like what Kimberly has certain drive rush combos that require that and juggles. I do not. I mash it every time. And then guess what? And it's very consistent. And I haven't. If I drop it, it's because I messed up. It's not because of the mash. And I, if people do time it, I don't know. I time like I. I first learned to time it, and then I realized, oh, I've been timing it. And when you time it, you can drop it because if you're not perfect. And then I learned to mash. I was like, oh, I've been wasting my time. <laughs> So that's definitely something. So drive rush is really important, depending on and you depend on your point. Every character is important because it's a very fast move where you go forward very quickly. You can possibly do things that, like that, and oh, hey, all of a sudden I'm in your face with a low, and do things that you can extend combos with it. Let's say you got jab, like said. Oh, now all of a sudden that's dead, as opposed to like maybe I did jab, 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 flash kick, you know, and our. Sorry, I don't know gal combos. <laughs> yeah. All right. right I think go. let here. Let's, let's do this. Oh, it won't let me change characters. Can I uh... change? <laughs> okay, I guess we're playing Ryu and Gal yeah, because that's we all right. Want to no biggie. Characters. But you know, and hey, we'll get more details with that as we get to our intermediate stuff. But keeping it easy, that's something that you'll want to learn how to use. Again, watch. Like you're gonna like, and it's gonna sound like a repeating tape, but why make it hard on yourself trying to discover everything from scratch? I did that myself back in the day. I'd be like, "Ooh, I found a combo," and then you go look, and someone's already got a bread and butter combo that works every single time and does more than yours. Don't waste your time, especially on a game that's been out for a year almost now. That every a lot of things have been figured out. Not everything, of course. There's still things being discovered all the time, but bread and butters a lot. You're gonna find that. So literally, you can go search YouTube, find your character. Gal Street Fighter 6 bread and butters and there's going to be a video on there with basic combos and everything that you can learn and it's going to be set up so make it easy on yourself do not waste your time trying to be like I discover let me find the combo I made because I want to I will say this as well take your ego out of it if you want to be like I found this combo therefore I do it you're going to just hamper yourself while you're doing lackluster combos and, and you're dying in two hits and wondering why you can't do that same thing so don't waste your time with that Instead, waste your time with this. 
Yeah, I'm I'm still awful at it. But to be fair, I just started learning it last week because Chris was like, you have to learn this. <laughs> yeah, and the thing as well is, again, I'm only, like, for the most part, I'm only doing that motion in neutral. Like, everything else, like, com like for example, when you're doing your combos and you're doing drive rush Oki, mash that shit. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I think that is a good... So, I was talking to a buddy earlier, and he's, he's one of the newer players, and he's like, I struggle with when to use it. So, let's... We kind of briefly talked about it, but let's pause and, like, we'll explain it more in the sense of, like, easier cut and dry. Okay. So, you only drive rush when you're trying to extend a combo or if you're trying to eliminate space. So, say somebody is playing, you know, very passive, you're kind of far away, you you know, you're trying to walk them down, it's just not working. Yeah, you can use buttons to try to, you know, remove space and things like that, but drive rush is going to get you in a lot quicker. Yes. Now and you, drive rush is really good too because it's only one bar. Yes. Of, of drive meter. Yeah. If you do the regular one, if you do the parry drive rush, it's only one bar. If you cancel it, it's three, as you can see there. Yeah. So make sure. So also with that, something a change that happened in Street Fighter is they did this. Um, previously, when the game came out, you could only drive rush with forward forward. They made it so that you can drive rush with parry, and they made it so that light moves are cancelable in on whiff. So back in the day, I could just do ba 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 ba, and when it hit, like I could just, I could literally just tap jab, parry, and I could just be here. And if it hit, it would automatically confirm. Um, so they took that out when they did the macro, because otherwise you could just be uh 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 and just tap. So something to keep in mind is if you're watching that, you could accidentally do this. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot for me, but it is something that can happen. So you do have to be aware that if you're pressing buttons or like something like that that you could accidentally cost yourself three bars on with but it's also something that you could take advantage of because oh i saw a button and then you know now you're in their face you saw how quick that was goddamn yeah. that's something that geef players uh use a lot too because it's all you see is a button and then all of a sudden i'm in your face so that's something to keep in mind um, might be a little bit higher level thinking, but it's something to keep in mind. If you well, no, if you make a mistake yourself, why that happened? That's because that's something that's in the game now. Um, yeah. Well, let's and see. The, keep in mind that you cannot do that if you're holding down, back, or down. Yes. Um, and the reason they did that is because that would be super good with charge yes. characters. <laughs> yes. We're um, like, yo, I push this button and I'm dashing while holding down, back, so I can literally like. You know, do a guile button, and I'm I'm drive rushing, and I'm still holding down back, so I can still get my flash kick, yeah. which would be crazy. There's so, a lot to drive rush. I'm trying to think of something that can keep it simple. One thing is that you cannot block during drive rush. So yeah. if if I drive if I said he presses the button, as you can see there, I'm holding down back. You know, there you go. Like you can't do anything. So you can cancel it. Uh, I'm not doing that with guile. You can cancel it into a super. Um, so if you happen to see, but you keep that in mind that drive rush again, just like parry is strong, but you can't just throw it out there because if I have a super and you do something, you do, let's say you do a throw into drive rush. I know for a fact after throw, dri throw into drive rush, you cannot block in time. And that means I got, and I got a super, you're going to take that. I know oh. that if like, um, some people like to extend block strings, but they're not true block strings, but. Uh, here, there has, there's a small gap, not enough, big enough gap for me to press a normal button. But if you have an invincible move, again, all of a sudden, like, so if let's, let's say I did that, right? That's like, let's say, but I press buttons and I try to keep it going. And he, if he DPs here, like, um, I can't, like, I'm just going to get hit. So, uh, you'll see that where, like, I don't, I don't know his... Thing, but like there, there are th move up times like that. Like drive rush is not the end all be all uh, at all. Once again, it's one of those things that's strong. And a lot of things in this game, they're strong, but there's always a counter to them. So keep that in mind as well. You can't just be like uh, here. You also have to keep in mind that uh, here, and you're gonna learn this as you get into. You're gonna learn more people's frame data, things of that nature, and how the game works. Uh, things, but we'll try to keep it simple here. But yeah. drive rush strong, but again, there are ways to counter it. And you can cancel it too. So like, you don't even necessarily cancel in a super. So like, if I just drive rush here, and you see how far it goes, 
you can cancel it like in so like the probably the fastest cancel in the game is to throw and it's gonna take you like the shortest distance so say you drive rush and you're trying to bait something out you can like throw so they could be thinking you're gonna drive rush but you throw to stop and they put out a button or they put out like a big uppercut or something because they're trying to punish you they're like i know he's gonna do this you can essentially bait things out by stopping early yes you uh, can. Thing. so there are things like that where you can do so like some like i have setups where i'll do specifically this because you see drive rush and i do that and now again it depends on who you're fighting the super the startup will like again we'll we'll eventually get all of that but it's something where you can definitely do it and throw is the fastest throw stops all momentum immediately yep. this kind of like you can see i still had a little bit momentum and that's why i like it because it looks like i'm still coming in so when people try to do something because they see that green here but this stops all momentum immediately yeah all right so i think we've covered drive rush as much as we can so this this is going to be a split series today we're just kind of breaking down like yeah. hey let's play street fighter beginners so we've covered suffered but parry we've, we've covered, covered drive rush it's okay to do simple moves you don't have to always worry about learning you know motions when you are trying to learn special moves we've t taught you you know hey you should do it 10 times each side this is how you practice stuff yes. and then we still need to cover Drive Impact. Yes. One of the bane of existence for a lot of people yes. in this game, and it was a huge turnoff to some people. Mm -hmm. um, I find it hilarious because... Um, did you play Street Fighter 4? <laughs> um, that game literally had focus attack where it would absorb hits, and you could FADC stuff, so you could cancel moves that normally shouldn't be canceled. I mean, Street Fighter 5 had V system. Like, yeah, there's a lot. So... DI is heavy punch and heavy kick together. And when you do that, basically what happens is whoever inputs drive impact last is going to get the crumple effect. Uh, but DI is really good because depending on where you use it, so even if I block this DI that Chris does, if I'm close enough to the wall, I'm still going to get splattered. Yes, and there's so a lot of pushback on that. So I think if yeah. I was like back here, I think. Like, ooh, close. almost. Oh, right, so yeah, right here. Right here. Yeah. So if I, I think if Which I'm is right, crazy because that's about two characters yeah, almost right here. So like, wall. and something again, you're gonna pick up and as you play, I I saw Guile's foot is standing right at the end of this tip of this circle. So I know this is now the range of where I can do this. So you're gonna pick this up as well as you start playing more. You're gonna you're gonna pick up little tricks to be like, this is where my spacing's at. So in this case, I'm like, I know, like I said earlier, right here, this is gonna hit the wall. So this is something you'll pick up just as you play. You'll recognize the stages, be like, this is where I'm standing. So just a little tip there. But yes, drive impact is good. The, the, however, the thing is, of course, is it can be reversed. This is not a panic button. Do not just be like, oh my god, I'm getting hit, drive, and all of a sudden, and, that, and then he can and he reverses it, and now you take big damage. So yeah. go, go ahead and reverse it for here. And I can't do a thing about this. He gets I all the combo so he that's wants. Best combo. Yeah, he gets everything he wants. <laughs> this gets up a lot of things. He could also decide to just do fierce into drive impact again and take a bar, because as you see, drive impact takes a bar, uh, both doing it and receiving. So uh, he could be like, oh, I'm just gonna do fierce into that, and next you know, I lost two. Like actually, I lost three. What? Yeah, I lost three. You know, now you lost three bars, three drive bars off of that. So it's not a yeah. panic button, but it is very good 26 frames depending on the games you play may seem like a lot but honestly when in street in games when you are seeing you're thinking about so much you're thinking about oh where's his standing at what buttons he doing oh if he did a fireball i have to worry about this and all things like that there's so much happening on the screen yeah. all of a sudden this comes out that looks kind of fast don't it like 26 yeah. frames looks kind of like that looks kind of fast all of a sudden <laughs> And then, <laughs> so, you just, so let's, especially at let's low level, show, keep this in mind. Yeah, oh, for sure. And that's what, like, a lot of people didn't like because DI at a low level is definitely a scrub killer. Not saying that, like, oh, low level people are scrubs or anything like that, but, like, a lot of times you don't know how to get out of it. So, like, one thing I definitely want to teach everybody is, like, what you can do to get out of it. So, of course, you can DI back, which we showed. So, somebody drive impacts. What I personally do is I wait for the flash, and I have my button macroed, so my uh, button next to my heavy punch is macroed to drive impact. 
Um, and the reason it is is because you sometimes get in those situations and the game's going really fast. And like Chris said, 26 frames comes quick. So I just like to be able to hit that one button, call it a day kind of thing. Uh, you can also throw it as well. Yes. So if you're body to body and you're in the corner and you're like, I don't know what to do, and they go to DI you, you can just throw it. Of course, I didn't do it fast yeah. enough there. So you can throw them yep. out of it. And then you can also super it as well. So you'll see this a lot, especially in situations where you're you're burnt out and someone's trying to get you to the corner because they want to stun you. They're, a lot of times they're going to press a button and then DI because you don't want to just randomly DI because, again, 26 frames is kind of slow. They, a lot of people are going to be doing this because they don't want to get hit. So they're here. So that's something where you're going to see them do like, uh, and then I'm going to do it. Because I want to, I want to put you in blocks on so that you're not jumping, and then I'm gonna do that. So if you're burnt out, if I'm slow enough, let's say depending on what I'm doing, you can throw it. But otherwise, the only option you may have, as you can see there, I he threw that. But sometimes the only option you may have is a super, or some sort of invincible move. No, he doesn't play Ryu, so this, <laughs> so we'll have to see. I what don't even. Do. I'm trying to do a Ryu super. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you could super, you, you could, could throw DP. it. You Actually, could yeah, just DP. Just, yeah, just DP because it's invincible. Oh, Ooh, I forgot. It? Armor. It's hit, it's hit base. Yeah. So it's three hits. The third yes. hit will break. So like Jury's DP will beat it. Um, and then you could also neutral jump or jump back is really good as well because Are if there, gonna... hmm, is there enough time? Try to just jab it. See if you could just mass jab. Okay, not oh. enough time there because of the blocks done but as it so sometimes again especially if you're playing people who are panicking and do it you if you're already doing a block string and you see him start up you can just and keep continue to just bop 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 all three hits you're broken and now like so you'll see that i'll see that a lot of times with kimberly because i get the run stop or whatever and they're like oh i'm just tired i want to press a button but i'm already doing this and i just be like okay then I just keep pressing jab. I know it's gonna break, and now you lost more bar. And now, like, yeah. So drive impact again has its uses. So it is something that you. I suggest you should throw it out kind of random, occasionally. Don't just be like, uh, here, but like, uh, at this range where he's worried about. Okay, I got it here. All of a sudden, I just hit him in here, and now yeah. you know something like that can be something to be useful. Um, but I, me personally. I talk about it more as a disclaimer. <laughs> um, I don't want to say at lower levels, you're going to see it a lot more often, but that's not to say that you're not going to see it at high level. You are going to see people throwing it out kind of randomly. You're going to see people setting up setups off of it, things of that nature. Um, because again, you're looking at so much that you might like, like, and you, especially if you're blocking well, they might just like, fuck it. And all of a sudden you got hit, you're in a corner, you took a big combo to get Oki, that can turn it around. So it is very high risk and high reward. Um, because on the other side, if I re respond, I get a full combo. If I'm Kimberly, I get a side swap for, for free. Um, it, it's, it can definitely ruin your day. So keep, in, keep that in mind, how it works. But again, uh, here... If you see it in the corner, you get that. And then if you're burnt out, you get that stun animation. Uh, let's see. Can you change it to, like, zero but not fixed? Like, can you, uh, does it give you the option to do, like, no recovery on that uh, for the meter? I can set it to standard. Okay, yeah, there you go. That's standard. So let's do standard. And then... Oh, you want bar, though, right? No, that's fine. Okay. So here... So we're going to do that. Oh, there you go. Do it to me. Uh, as you can see here, got the birdies around my head, and look how much time he had. Yep. Until so, like, so you get all that time to do a combo. If I'm Kimberly, I can actually recover a can and throw the can and still get a full combo. Yeah, it's uh, a long time. So like, Jerry can back dash do Fuha stock. Like, you got some time to do some spice. Yeah. For sure. So you get a, you get a lot of time to do something to get something on that. So you want to avoid that if possible. That's you're taking if you're taking at least you know forty percent, fifty percent, sixty percent if they got meter. Like you're taking a lot of life with that. So that's something to keep in mind. You want to avoid that if possible. Um, drive impact again. You're not gonna see it too too often. But there are some things that you're gonna see. Um, one is that if it uh, let's see I get a punish counter and I might do that and that combos 
And if I hit him, he's going to lose a meter. So he could, let's say he's close to burnout. And he get a punish counter, and he just lost a bar. Actually, yeah. what, two bars because of punish counter? Is it bar and a half, two bars? If it's punish counter, um, yeah, it's going to, so actually I'll do it. I'm going to block this flash kick real quick. So, didn't, yeah, okay, block the flash kick and do fierce into the drive impact. Oops. Uh -oh. Uh, not drive rush, drive impact. Oh, sorry. No worries. Oh, no, you can't. Do uh, do a DP. <laughs> so you see, see, the, I did a, I did a chunk. Oh, you, you burnt out, so you can't see it. But uh, um, so let me do this again. Oh, you can't impact. So, okay, we gotta wait for it to come back. <laughs> but you'll see, it's gonna, you'll see this. Not, uh, I won't say a ton. But you'll see it kind of regularly, because some people prefer to ha to drive to take dry bar than damage, depending on where it's at. Uh, I'm gonna do the flash kick and yeah. So I did a so look how much meter I took. So I did two bars from the flash kick, and then he took one from the punish counter and then the drive impact. So yeah. that took like almost that was almost there. So that could be a real bad situation if you're someone who all like you could go from four to one and a half real quick, and that could be put you in a big uh, that could put you in trouble. So yeah. keep that. And if you want to see like a good example of that, go watch Capcom Cup and watch Ume play Jury like. He'll he'll end combos early with drive impact. Like he's comboing them, and he'll just drive impact instead to get them into burnout instead. Instead of doing like yo this crazy huge combo, he's like I'm gonna end feng shui early, di it, so it puts them into burnout. Yeah, and that's really bad for them because now not only do you get that now feng shui, you gotta block all the cancels, so that's more stuff you're blocking than usual. And you can put you in burnout. So it's very strong. It's actually you're gonna see a lot of Mojuris have been using Feng Shui recently. Uh, I know Nephew was kind of the first one I saw really using it. Uh, and Uma is definitely gonna have everyone using it and stuff. But it's very strong for those reasons. Um, yeah. And like Speaking drive impact camp, is a little. It's 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 weird because it's like it's kind of a weak thing to do. But it's it is very high risk. But it's also like I said, high reward. And out of nowhere, it could be, it could it could be something. <laughs> yeah, and so speaking of cancels, when you're diing, not every move in the game is di cancelable. So sometimes you will actually have moves where like, oh, I'm putting out this button, they go to di and return, and oftentimes you can just react like, yo, I'm jabbing, they di, you can di back because your jab's recovering fast enough. But there's sometimes there's moves in the game. I'm a, I'm would guess this is, I don't know, but like sometimes there's moves in the game. Like say I can't, I di'd back and I couldn't cancel that. So I'm already hard committed to that move. They commit to di. There's nothing I can do. Like yeah. I just have to take it. Yeah. So those are any moves that are not cancelable so if you look at your character go to super combo that gg or go to uh frame assist tool the app our ultimate frame data is another app another website excuse me that you can look up where it has frame data but if you look at the moves and the move is not cancelable whether uh here that means you cannot it cannot you cannot di out of it so uh for him ford ferris you can't cancel all of it the only thing you can link so if he were to hit me he could then continue to combo but he can't do anything he can't cancel that button into another special or super or anything so if you yeah. can't do that then you can't di it so i don't know uh guiles like let me see like no i'm pretty sure you can Okay, I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think you can cancel that one. So try D DI for me. Oh, sorry, hold on. Right. I might have been slow. Let me try one more time just to make sure. Right. Oh, that was. <laughs> yeah. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so much harder to do than you think it is. Yeah, there you go. You can see I'm mashing, the, I'm mashing the hell out of it. And since that move is not special cancelable or cancelable period, I cannot D out of it. So keep that in mind with characters. Um, there are characters like DJ, who's a very strong character, but he has a lot of moves that are not actually special cancelable. If you spend a little time with DJ, you'll see that a lot of his buttons are not cancelable, and a lot of his special moves you cannot cancel the special moves in the super. Yeah. So those are moves that you can DI. So there's things to keep in mind. But I will tell yeah. you, oh. as someone who does not DI a lot, 
the main thing to do keep in mind with DI especially if you see someone who does it is keep that knowledge in your head and know that they like the DI try to keep maybe an eye on when they like to do it but know that if you're new to corner and you're fighting someone that likes the DI it's coming and a lot of times I will honestly just sit there and wait because I know it's coming and once I, all yeah. I gotta do is counter it once and now you're in a very bad situation Yep, that's big brain, high level stuff. And that's so at I think every today, level it happens, by the way. Even at master yeah. level, I still run into people that want to just DI. Yeah. So we hit an hour mark. So this is going to be an ongoing series. This is this this is not like, oh, we're going to teach you all of Street Fighter in a night. Because we'd be here for four hours. And so instead, I think this is a very good beginner's dive into Street Fighter and the system and how things work and how what to look for, what to practice on. So I think we should give everybody a game plan. If you're just started playing, you need to figure out what your character's buttons are. Yes. You need to at least attempt the basic combos for your character. Do all, like, I know you want to jump in and fight. Pause. Learn your character first. Learn what your character does. Learn basic combos learn special inputs once yes. you get comfortable enough with that then you can start implementing yes. like and then computer go, opponents and things go like play that. hub play casual do not immediately jump into ranked because you're going to hamper yourself by either playing people who are at such a low level that you beat them and thinking that you're better than you are maybe you stop that or maybe you get discouraged early or maybe you put yourself in a situation where you spend a month with the game and you're significantly better than when you started but because you played rank early you now gotta fight all these low level people and grind your way up to where you actually should be and making it and it maybe you like you're just uh so annoyed that you gotta i learned how to dp i learned how to anti-air and all of a sudden i gotta do this for the next week to get to where i should be because i started early so go to hub go to casuals stay in training mode go to your locals play offline before you jump in the ranks learn like make sure you learn logic so you don't hinder yourself and you know start yourself where you got to beat up low-level people and that sound that might sound fun but i can tell you it's a very annoying when you're like i really i i hate that i have to do this to you that you're not adapting i'm doing the same thing over to you over and over over and over again and i'm not learning because you're not learning <laughs> so yeah. don't do it to yourself so so funny here. story we um we went to we have an arcade that's literally down the street from the house it's a free play arcade you pay like 10 or 12 bucks and you play you play as long as you want so they had fighting games so we took the kids there yesterday and i uh played street fighter with my son and he's never played fighting games so we were playing third strike and i was playing alex and i got him in boot loops and i just kept stomping on him and he was like you just keep doing the same move and i was like welcome to fighting games so just speaking to that it was just kind of a funny story where <laughs> You know, you might play and you're like, this is so cheap. They just keep doing the same thing. Well, if you don't have an answer for it, yeah, that, like, that's how it goes. And, and the same thing with sports. Like, mm -hmm. bro, if you, can't, if you can't defend the perimeter in basketball and it's up against a three-point shooting team, guess what they're going to do? They're going to keep shooting threes. Yes. And that's just or like if you earlier. can't stop running football, <laughs> they're going to keep running the ball. Like, <laughs> and just like what we said, matches are where you find the questions. So the question yep. now he has is, how do I stop boot loop? And – trading mode in youtube and twitter etc those are where he's gonna uh, like if he were to let's say he you know sticks with it because you know he's your son he's gonna grow up in the house he's gonna see the sticks let's say he sticks with it he that's where he's gonna have to find those answers and that's where it happens so like uh, and there's no shame in being like to anybody out there there's no shame in asking your friends and everything else i to this day will ask someone something first because if they have an answer already why would i go spend hours yeah. in trading mode Agreed. And here, maybe I'll try to expound expound upon that answer. But yeah. yes, feel free to ask. And that's what we're trying to like. Come ask with us. Moomarauders. Like I'm in another community, and they're asking me questions, and I'm like, "Yo, come to Moomarauders because I can help." But like, even my knowledge is like nowhere near as high as a lot of the other people in the community. So instead of just asking one person that plays the game, you ask in Moomarauders, you're gonna get a lot more responses there than just me by myself. 
And then sometimes there's multiple answers as well. Like, uh, yeah. like if I tell someone about the jury matchup with Kimberly, there's not just one thing. There's multiple things, and then there's things that I do that maybe someone else does something different, etc. You want to be in that environment where people can kind of give you some more information. So definitely come holla at us and you know ask these questions because as these questions get asked, we now know where to you know gear the video. So we are telling you, you you see this QR code right here up there right above uh, the top right scan that come join the community come j be in the street fighter channel ask these questions people got work so they might get answered late but they'll get answered yeah. <laughs> i promise you yeah for sure so we're going to end it here um i think this was a good beginners kind of jump in guide and then we're going to have an intermediate one as well um but i think what we're going to start doing with the podcast is we're going to have conversations where it might just be Chris and I, where we're just talking about stuff that's going on. Um, or we'll have a conversation where we're going to have a guest. And then maybe the next week we'll have another episode of this. So we'll kind of do like vice versa, like one week is this, one week is that. And we'll just go back and forth. Um, that way we kind of keep things fresh. Um, so, of course, we all want to just say thank you so much for listening. If you got all the way to the end of this video. And if you have stuff that you want to cover that we didn't cover for the intermediate guide. I have a few ideas, but please write them in the comments, write them in the discord and we can definitely address stuff. Cause that's our whole goal with this is just to get like, I love when, you know, we run community events or stuff against other discord servers. And, you know, we have a bunch of really strong players in there. Cause that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to accomplish. So. Yes. Yes. Please let us know. Call at me and I'm going to definitely, um, by the time, uh, by the time this is out, I'm going to put out a how I set up training mode video for people. So that way you can kind of get an idea of what I do and what everything is. Because you see, I'm sure you see a lot of stuff on the screen right now. It might look confusing. I promise once you know what it is, it's all very simple uh, here. And I can even tell you the things I ignore. So like the frame meter, I definitely use it, but I'm not someone who's like counting all the every, you know, counting all everything yeah. that's here available. So and I, I would appreciate how... that. Cause I am, I use training mode, but I use training mode for combos and that's about it. So I would love an in-depth training mode kind of guide. So where so that'll be available when you see this when you see this video on our youtube uh if it's not uh, like if uh, if uh, i'll make it available so that it'll be around the same so it'll be the same time so you can come here watch this video pick up what we did then you can go jump and train it go watch my video go watch the other video about how to set up training mode so you can yeah. get started and kind of learn you know here's how I use things that it's not going to be anything like fancy where I'm like, oh, this is weird, but it's going to be like, here's how you can make it a little bit streamlined, easier to learn things yourself. And that, and how I personally use it again, this is, I use it all the time with Kimberly because she's so set up heavy. And there are a lot of characters who are either set up heavy or maybe you're combo heavy, special combos. Reuse definitely going to be someone who's going to have counter hit combos, things of that nature. And it'll help you figure out how to, you know, how to just yeah. navigate, especially in this one because the UI is not the most friendly they made every, they put everything on so many pages so i think you know i'll definitely put that out for your people yeah so this is thursday uh tonight's community night so stop by the hub ask questions if you just got done watching this even if you have comments there i'll be in chat um so just let us know peace